Y'all ready? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. Hmm. Yes, Lord. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Father God, we do thank you for supplying your word to us because it's by your word that our lives are brought into your kingdom. And all the revelation and all the blessing and all the goodness that is supplied by heaven, we find in your word. So, Lord, we just thank you that you're going to open your word up to us tonight. And we're going to revel in you. We're going to have a wonderful time in your word tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name. And all who agree, say amen. amen. So, in John chapter 5 and verse 39, it says, Search the scriptures. This is Jesus speaking. Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. So we've been looking at, at this scripture and, and we've been discovering what Jesus meant by the scripture testifies of him or, or shows us a picture of who he is. So when you're reading the Bible, you need to look at the Bible. Uh, first of all, you need to understand this. The Bible, say this with me, the Bible, the Bible is, God is God speaking to me. So when you're reading the Bible, God is speaking to you, and he's showing you Jesus Christ. And when we, if we read the Bible, and we're just reading mainly you know, for information or something like that, or we're trying to get through it, then we are not uh, receiving really what God wants us to really have. We're just kind of skimming along the surface. And we're not really getting the best of what God wants to show us through his word. Amen? So let's go back to Genesis chapter 3, please, and we'll uh, pick up kind of like where we left off the last time. Genesis chapter 3, so we're looking at walking with God. God loves to walk with man. Amen. God loves to walk with man. We are the finest thing that God ever created. There is never going to be anything in all of creation, in heaven and in earth, that is finer than humanity. Now, sometimes we look around right now and we see fallen man, so we think, this ain't all that great. But we're not seeing what God sees. God looks at the Spirit. Yes. Amen? So, God loves to walk with man, and being a Christian enables us to do just that. When we have the Spirit of God in us, and His love has been shed abroad in our hearts, then we are able to see the see things the way that God sees things. Until we became a Christian, we could not see things the way God sees things. But now that he lives in us, our eyes have a new revelation when we're looking around. Amen? So, and it's something that we learn about. That's part of the reason why we've been studying on the soul, because if your soul won't line up with your spirit, you won't see much. Remember, uh, Brother Ricky said about, you know, can the blind lead the blind? They sure can. And they both fall, find themselves in a ditch. I, I posted something this week. said, separate yourself from the blind or you'll find yourself in a ditch with them. <laughs> Amen. That's good advice. So, and we learned that Jesus comes looking for those who are willing to walk with him. The, it, there's even believers that are not real willing to walk with Jesus. And we need to understand something about Jesus. What Jesus asks us to do, if you'll go to Luke, uh, well, let's get in Genesis first. Let me read Genesis. Hello, back up a little bit here. Genesis chapter 3, you're all there, right? Okay. Verse 8 says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Remember we learned this, that the reason why God called out is because he couldn't see him. Because Adam's spirit had died. Now that doesn't mean that it's dead like we look at something dead on the ground, something like that. It means that his spirit had gone into spiritual death 
and it was not alive to God anymore and God was looking for the spirit of Adam and he couldn't find it because it was dead. Amen? So, so God came looking, you know, before man fell, God would walk with him every day. Once, and when we come to Jesus, our life is restored to God and he wants to walk with us every day. Amen? So now let's go to Luke chapter 5. So Jesus is looking for those that will walk with him. And we need to understand something about Jesus. It would do you a lot of good to read, the, read through the Gospels and read the red letters and pay attention to how Jesus talks to his guys. <laughs> read the red and pray for power. Woo I'm reading the red and praying for power. Because uh, Jesus had, think about this, three, Jesus had three years to take 12 pretty unspiritual guys. As a matter of fact, the leader of the group, Peter, was originally one of the most unspiritual. As a matter of fact, we're going to find out when we read through this right now that Jesus... When Jesus blessed Peter, Peter said, Lord, get away from me because I'm a sinful man. So Jesus had to take these three guys, at least one of them was a heathen, that was Peter, okay? And probably Judas too, I don't know, because Judas, Judas wasn't really looking for the Messiah, he was looking for an earthly king. That's why he did what he did. So he had to take these, in three years' time, he had to pour as much information as he could into these 12 guys who are mostly not really spiritual. They're, none of them were preachers to begin with. None of them were Pharisees or Sadducees or teachers of the law or any of that sort of thing. They just had jobs. And Jesus picked these 12 guys and poured everything into them. So you'll find when you read through the Gospels, Jesus doesn't mix words with these guys. Amen. He tells them, this is what I want done. Or he, when they don't do things, he says, what are you doing? And he's not happy. <laughs> so, okay. Luke chapter 5 says, And it came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, Remember, that's where that guy was running around in the tombs. He hadn't dealt with him yet. And saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were, got out, were gone out of them, and they, were washing, and they were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him, or asked him, that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. So now you think about this scenario here. Peter and the boys, they've been working all night. Remember? They've been working all night. They fished all night. They didn't catch anything. So they're tired. They're frustrated. They're wanting to finish up their net stuff and go sleep. Okay? And Jesus says, hey, take me out in the water. Well. <laughs> they didn't none of them say, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> No, they didn't say that at all. They said, oh, okay. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drop. <laughs> and Simon answered in his frustration. Master? you got to imagine this. You know, don't, don't just... When you're reading through the Bible, try to put yourself in that situation or try to see what people are going through at the time. So you can, you know how, what Peter, you know, Simon Peter, what he's feeling right now? <laughs> I want to go to bed, right? Okay. Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. But, you know, you're a preacher, so... Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their nets break. <laughs> and they beckoned unto the... That's what we just read in Malachi, remember? Yes. Pour out a blessing that you can't receive. You don't have to be real willing 
You have to be obedient. See? I don't like what's going on here, but okay, because you said so. The blessing came, didn't it? Okay. So it says they enclosed the fishes and their nuts break, and they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished. That doesn't mean like, wow, that means like he's spooked, overwhelmed. And all, and all that were with him at the draw of fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth that thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Say, forsake, forsake. All. all. So they forsook all. They left their business. And they followed him. Because they saw what he did. Are you listening to me? See, now... Were you, and, and this is what people say sometimes. They say, well, yeah, if I was in that boat and I saw them fishes and everything, you can read, can't you? The, the Bible tells us what happened here. You remember, you remember in Luke chapter 16 when Lazarus, you know, Lazarus this poor guy. He's laying at the gate of the rich man and he's looking for, you know, crumbs or something that they'd throw to him and the dogs would come and lick his sores and he died and he went down into hell and then the rich man died and, and, and Lazarus went over to the Abraham side which was the blessing side and the rich man went over to the burning side and he looks over and he, and he tells him to come over and dip his finger and stick, you know, because I'm burning up over here. And, and, he, and then he tells, and, he's, and uh, Abraham says, no, I can't do that. Besides that, there's a canyon in between us. Can't do that. So, well then, send Lazarus back up to the earth and let him talk to my family because I don't want them to come here. And Abraham said, you can read, can't you? Right? They have Moses and the prophets. That's what you can read, can't you? Moses and the prophets. We have the Bible. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so it's a blessing to follow him. So what we're going to look at tonight is, is uh, it, well, we're going to start with this, and we're going to move into some things. It says this, this is where Jesus began to train his disciples. Now, you notice he starts with four guys, and, and Luke's version doesn't tell you when he adds the rest. Okay, he starts with four guys. Jesus started off, when he started off preaching, he was by himself. He didn't have the 12. He just went around for a while. Then he gathered the 12. The most that Jesus ever had was 500. And then when he, when he told, you know, when they said, we want to hear something deep, he said, okay, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And they went, Whoo! and they left. Most of them came back after he resurrected. Yeah. Amen. So let's take a walk with Jesus tonight. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis 4. And verse 25 says, And Adam knew his wife again. This is after the Cain and Abel thing. Remember, Abel didn't make it. Abel was the first prophet on earth. Say, Abel was a prophet of God. How do we know that? Because Jesus said you killed all the prophets beginning with Abel. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God, she said, has appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. The devil always seeks to kill the seed of God. Don't let the devil use you to kill God's seed. Amen. Amen. You know, the, Jesus' half-brother, he said, can, 
can sweet and bitter water come out of the same mouth? He didn't say it, it wasn't impossible. He said it shouldn't happen. Amen. So it says, verse 26, unto Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos, and then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. So the first prophet got killed, so Adam and Eve had another child, and he was appointed also. Verse 1, chapter 5 says, This is the book of the genealogy of the generations of Adam, or genealogy of Adam, in the days that God created man, and the likeness of God created he. Him, male and female, created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And, lit, and Adam lived 130 years. Now, if you back up into chapter 4, which we don't have time for, it gives you the ungodly line, the line of Cain. Now, he begins to tell us the godly line, the, go, the line of Seth. Adam is neutral. Amen. Okay. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years and he begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Adam that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. So God is always looking for leaders to impart his wisdom into. So for 130 years, wisdom was gone. You know, uh, Abel was born and he began, he was just beginning to start his ministry. How do you know that? Because Cain didn't bother him until then. The seed of the devil went up to the seed of God and he killed him before he could get started. See that? Okay. But for 130 years, the wisdom of God was gone. Adam and Eve didn't have it. They lost it. They lost it when they fell. Okay, so 130 years, but God is always looking for someone to impart wisdom into. Uh, go over to Proverbs chapter 29, please. Proverbs 29. Psalms, Proverbs. 29 is almost the end of Proverbs. Proverbs 29 and verse 2. So, Proverbs 29, verse 2 says, When the righteous are in authority, or when the righteous are increasing. That doesn't mean increasing in authority, but means it's, it's kind of a play on words things in the Hebrew that if, if we're multiplying. Okay? When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. So people knew sorrow under Cain, right? They were mourning under Cain people that were under Cain, his descendants. If they had anything to do with you, you were suffering. Okay? If you were in the, if you had to do with Seth and his lineage, then you were rejoicing. Nevertheless, Cain's line prevailed. Why did Cain's line prevail? Because people were not born again. When people are not born again, they tend, they don't have a spirit to help them. So then it's only the soul. The people that followed after God in the old covenant followed after God not with their spirit because they didn't have a born again spirit. They had trained their soul to follow after God. Yes. Okay? So how, could, how is that possible? Let me give you an example. One time a, a minister I know, he was over in Jerusalem and he was standing up on that hill that's close to the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem, uh, you know we've all seen the picture of the, you know, seen a picture or something of the Wailing Wall, right? It's this big wall in Jerusalem. It, it was it was part of the foundation in the Temple Mount area, and and the Jews go there and they pray all the time. And he was watch and he was watching this this old Jewish rabbi. You, know, you could tell because he had the curly cues, you know, going down the Hasidic, and he had the little hat on and. And he, he, he was walking along, and all of a sudden he started to kind of dance around. And all of a sudden he started twirling and dancing. And he's going around and around dancing. And, and he started to shout, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And he said, The Spirit of God descended. Yes. Why? Because he worshiped, was worshiping God from his soul. Yes. 
God will respond to worship. Amen? Okay. So, it says, so people suffered under Cain, but they rejoiced under Seth, but Cain prevailed. Look, look here at verse 12. Same chapter. It says, if a ruler hearkened to lies, all of his servants are wicked. So what happened? Let's look at this. Go to 2 Chronicles, please. 2 Chronicles. We're going to, we're going to do a lot of, we're going to cover a lot of territory. 2 Chronicles 16 and verse 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord run true and to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect or loyal towards him. So that so that that rabbi that was dancing and, and shouting praise to God in, in, in front of the wailing wall, you know, at the Temple Mount area, his heart was loyal towards God. I mean, he's not born again, but his heart was loyal towards God. And God was showing himself, the, the, that minister said that, man, the presence of God was just powerful. Amen. What was, because God has to respond to his word. When you show God that you're loyal to him, he has to respond to you. And he wants to show himself strong, and he was showing himself strong. Loyal towards him, herein thou hast done foolishly, for thou hast hence, and from henceforth thou shalt have war. So what's this talking about? This is, this is the third king of Israel, the third king of Judah. His name is Asa. And when Asa started off, he did just, he did just exactly what he, was, what he was supposed to do. He got rid of the high places. He got rid of the idols. He pulled people back into, you know, back into the temple. Come on, we're going to worship God. And for a long time, for, most, for, for 35, 36 years, he did exactly what he was supposed to do as a king. But then the king of Israel, which is his his brethren, right? The king of Israel decided he, we're going to attack them. So he started building a fortress in Ramah. Ramah's, Ramah's about mm, 20 miles from Jerusalem. It's real close. So he starts building this fortress, you know, and it's a place to launch an attack. And, and so the king of Judah is worried about it, so he calls over the king from Syria, and he shows them his gold and his silver, and you know the stuff they have in their big storehouse of of finances, and which is a really dumb thing to do. Don't ever show the enemy what you have. <laughs> and because he did that thing, God's telling him, "I would have shown myself strong to you if you would have remained loyal." But. Because you've acted foolishly, there's going to be wars the rest of your life. Now, he didn't live much longer. He only lived about three more years. And the reason why he only lived a few more years is because when instead of listening to the rebuke, because a prophet went to him and told him this, instead of listening to the rebuke, he got mad. And then he got a, he got a disease in his feet, and the disease went through his body and killed him. And it says that he died because he trusted physicians instead of the Lord. Now that's not a, not, that's, that's, <laughs> that's not a don't ever go to doctor 